Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to BFL Reacts. So the last episode was like really <laughs> emotionally draining. Just made me feel very hard. Absolutely loved it. I think it was a really great episode. At the end of the episode, our characters meet Amelia. Very interesting to see what the dynamic is here because these characters kind of like worship Amelia as the one true conductor. But they don't realize it's Amelia, and I don't know if she's going to reveal that to them, or what's going to go down there. Because they, they're they not going to assume that she's the conductor. Uh, I don't think it's really known what the conductor looked like, because if it was, you'd think that the Apex would know. And they think that the conductor was a man, <laughs> so really hating this man, Simon. Don't like him one bit. <laughs> but more than anything, I'm really looking forward to seeing how... The conductor, not the conductor. I'm looking forward to seeing how Amelia has changed since uh, the end of book one. After her, she had a bit of a heart to heart with Tulip. I'm curious to see what's rubbed off on her if she's trying to be a better person, if she's trying to get her number down. I would assume that she has, and I honestly think that she's going to be the one to really get through to Grace and inspire real change in Grace's heart. Grace is very clearly on the right path right now, but I think Amelia is going to really, just really set her straight. That's what I would like to see, at the very least. Uh, I, <laughs> all my predictions have come true so far, so let's hope that this positive prediction comes true now. <laughs> and this hell of a title, The Canyon of the Golden Winged Snake's Car. Excited to see those golden winged snakes, I guess. Let's get into it. There are lines of code that don't match the reality of the car. We barely what? escaped the ejecting train cars. We're the victims here. One sent me out from the engine to resolve it. One? Oh, she like, works for one, one one now. Oh, I see the emblem on her. What? The false conductor. One has no idea you exist, short pants. Oh. At least no more so than any of the passengers. In a very Damn. sense, we're just numbers to him. Every passenger is important. Their well-being and progress is what the train is all about. All aboard the growth train, toot toot. <laughs> Some of the What's the, the glitch? Have corrupted code. I created a pulse that scans for that code, and it was working fine until three weeks ago, when cars started ejecting one after the other. And since you say oh my you keep ejected along with them, yeah, they are. They sure, gotta be the impressed. We've been tracking. You've been tracking me. It hasn't been the apex. The what? Oh. It was just a single high number. Oh. The ejected cars. Have there been objects that didn't match the environment? Phone booths, college campuses, a lot of turtles, too many turtles, a number of turtles that makes you think, why? Why turtles again? <laughs> what is up with turtles? That's been a recurring thing since season one. And her, yeah. I didn't even make that connection. She probably knows more about numbers than anyone on the train. She might know what's wrong with yours. Well... Exactly. She might have something to do with it. She's working with one one and uh, yeah, feed into his delusions to uh, save yourself, I guess. Never trust adult passengers. That's one of their rules. Aren't they almost adults? Probably. What? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> oh, I Children. I love Amelia. She's so cool. I'm glad she's improving herself. With purpose, too. And she's badass. Okay. There's the golden snakes with wings or whatever. You know, I can tell you children are in the car. I can see your numbers. How the, the hell did they get down there so fast? I wonder if they're gonna find out that she was the false conductor. <laughs> Let me see yours. <gasps> don't. Yeah, don't. Whoa. Why? Because I don't want to know yet. Simon, enough. This is happening to me. Quit making it all about you. I say when I look at it. I say what I do about okay, it. Okay, pop back. off, girl. And give me some space. But I'm getting kind of nervous with this conflict. Simon. Damn, I do kind of feel bad for him, but also fuck him. Man, this is such an awkward situation, dude. Hazel, what are you doing? I'm mad! 
Relatable. No! He grabbed your arm, he's being mean to you at Tuba! <gasps> Hazel, the shell! Good! I'll use it to fight him! Hazel! Girl, no! I can protect us with it! Hazel, come here. Take care of I'll yourself, baby. Now. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Stay close to me. I'm Tuba. <laughs> Wait, so, did he hear that? Oh, d does he... Does he know what's going on? What? Oh, oh my god, dude. <laughs> dude, I'd love if his boots just didn't work and he... <laughs> Wait. I get he has gravity boots, but this man just straight up has hops. What the hell? Oh my god, he went back to the cat. You're gonna help me. I am. Well, isn't that nice of me? <laughs> She's so sassy. You left me, so give me something for grace. I didn't leave you, Simon. I ran. There's a difference. No, there what? Isn't. That comb almost got me. I didn't realize you weren't by my side until the next car. Oh, okay. I am, who I am Simon. I can't give you more than that. That shot is anime as hell with the fire in front of him. Could you give me a few more details? Something more helpful than I need a thing? <laughs> she wants to be helpful. Oh? It's going down, but she doesn't seem to want to fix it. How old is she? How should I know? <laughs> How She's old is she? Like her 60s? And British. <laughs> Amelia? Her name is Amelia. Are the cat and Simon going to team up against Amelia and Grace? You Apex work so hard to get your numbers up. Think about what it would take for Amelia to get a number that high. That is a good point. What did Amelia do? Was it just wronging the train that made her number so high? Numbers are power. Numbers are numbers, and they're supposed to go down. You say Grace's number is broken, but the truth is, you just don't like how it's working. Damn. She's not acting like she should! And how exactly should she be acting? She's not one of your miniatures, Simon. She's shutting me out! Simon is in a very negative spot right now. Please, Samantha. I have to know why. Samantha. Is to see what she isn't telling you. What? Grace's tape? You'll have to extract tape of her memories and go inside. Since it isn't yours, it's safe. I knew you'd have something. Okay, okay. You always do. We shouldn't always know what's in a person's mind. Especially the minds of those we love. I'm not a child Big anymore. facts. I know what I'm doing. You sure as hell ain't a grown-up, boy. So another great one, as always. Hey yo, it's future me again. I'm probably going to be popping up a lot in these uh, episodes towards the end of season three. Because they're really just hitting different watching them a second time. The first time that I watched this episode, uh, at the end, in the discussion, I just was like asking questions and not really talking about the episode so i figured i'd discuss it some i really loved the interactions between our protagonists and amelia in this episode just their kind of not knowing how to react to her uh and her like no nonsense attitude it was fun seeing them interact hazel's breakdown in the cave was really hard hitting especially i'm tuba oh my god that was devastating to hear. Yeah, I, I mentioned in the color clock car how the hate of denizens is kind of reminiscent of racism. And I really feel like that had to have been intentional, especially with Grace dropping the line to like one of the good ones. I, I feel like you can't use that <laughs> that phrase and and not make it an allegory for race. So I guess you, you could interpret Hazel's breakdown as you know, a, a young minority having heard racist rhetoric and, and seen the way that, you know, other minorities are treated, just having that eaten into them and the way that that can affect a young, impressionable mind. And it, it, was, it was just hard to watch. I'm not smart enough to go deeper into that allegory without <laughs> probably being accidentally offensive, but I just think it's something really interesting to think about. And on to Simon, who's the biggest thing I want to talk about in this episode. What abusive boyfriend behavior from him this episode? 
And I even caught myself, like, I, I was like, I kind of feel bad for him. But I really shouldn't, because, like, he did grab her arm, like, he invaded her, Grace, he, he grabbed her arm and invaded her space like that. Just tried to take control of her person. And when he called, got called out on that, he was like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, and he probably was sorry. He probably did feel bad, but that doesn't garner sympathy. I, I guess I can feel bad for him. I can feel bad that he is the person he is, but I shouldn't feel bad that he's feeling bad for being called out, right? That's like one of those traits that a, an abuser can, can exhibit that might not even be intentionally done, right? Because I doubt he was like, oh, I'm going to be pouty and make Grace feel bad. I, he was probably legitimately hurt. It's a... Uh, it's 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 definitely like very interesting i love the scene with him and the cat or samantha just, just him losing his mind oh my god such powerful stuff <laughs> and I, I liked getting more insight to him and the cat's relationship here too she still cares about that man i don't know if it's more of a dislike of grace and amelia or a love for simon or a bit of both just really great stuff there. Now on to me, just like, <laughs> why why this? How this? I don't understand this. <laughs> because that's all I did in the discussion, almost. Got a few big questions here. First off, the gomes? That's right. That's what they're called, right? I don't want to Google it because I don't want to accidentally spoil something for myself. What is up with those things? Because, like, they lived in the wasteland in season one and two. We saw a bunch come up out of the ground to like a assault passengers so you would think that they're maybe like native to whatever dimension the infinity train is in but also there is an orb to manufacture them so were they created by the train but also why would they have something that that's only purpose is to like kill you that doesn't seem like a way to benefit people i don't know the origin of those things is very weird to me very curious about that. Um, on to Amelia. I love Amelia in this episode. I love her attitude. She's cool. Um, I can see why there was a lot of fan art of her. I'm really wondering what the significance of turtles are. I mean, like, the unfinished car with all the turtles has been a reoccurring thing. And Amelia created that car. And in the book one finale... When she was trying to make another car similar, there was a tree where all the leaves were turtles. Did did she make hate? Did she make Hazel? What's the si I don't under why why turtles? I don't get it. <laughs> that's such a that's just such a weird thing. I don't understand that at all. So I wonder if Hazel's like from the unfinished car. I don't know. Also, Simon is going to extract tape from race which i didn't even know like a person could do that I, I don't know samantha the cat which we got the cat's name gave him like I don't know, a tranquilizer dart or something i don't what i don't know what the hell she gave him they were like little orbs and like some little silver contraption so we're going to see grace's tape but oh okay i was confused about that because i was like wouldn't the tape just show like what got her on the train in the first place but i guess not if he is extracting new tape it's going to show everything that's been i guess important in her life since she's been on the train as well so he's gonna i don't know he's gonna see what's going on with hazel i'm i don't know i i think it's kind of weird it doesn't seem like he realizes that hazel is a denizen because he was sitting outside the cave when they were talking and like you could very clearly hear what they were saying inside the cave outside. I don't know. It's a, I guess maybe Simon wasn't meant to be hearing that. It's just kind of weird that <laughs> we would be from like the perspective of Simon sitting outside the cave and also hear them. Unless he's just, I don't know. They were just talking about like the shell. So I guess maybe he wouldn't like jump to the conclusion that she's transforming. Because to be fair, that would be like quite the leap to make. So I guess, I guess I can understand that. Just a lot of interesting stuff in this episode. And I'm looking forward to the next one. Let's check that title, baby.
The Hey Ho Whoa Car. I like that name. <laughs> I hope it's just a denizen. That, that That's all they say, though. Like, hey Ho! Whoa! <laughs> Is that a reference to something? Let, let me search Hey Ho Whoa. It just brings up results for the Hey Ho Whoa car, so I don't know. I don't know what that is supposed to mean, but I'm, I'm certainly, my curiosity is piqued by that title. I'll see you guys on the next episode of Infinity Train. I can't wait. <laughs> Until then, peace.